myself. I always let my life speak for what I am. A documentary on the life of Prophet James F. Jones, pastor of the Church of Universal Triumph, the Dominion of God Church Incorporation. This documentary takes a concise look at the life story of Prophet Jones from his early childhood days to his adult life. Prophet Jones was renowned for his very lavish lifestyle. His loyal supporters saw him as a great prophet and a healer of God. Crowds of people gathered to see an elegantly dressed and flamboyant Prophet Jones step out of his gold-colored Cadillac limousine for a grand entrance into Detroit's Fox Theater. His trademark was a $12,000 white mink coat, which was given to him as a gift. Each time Prophet Jones appeared in a public setting or in his church, one of his faithful members, who he named the Screaming Madonna would burst out with a loud scream and the audience would cheer. Sometimes when Prophet Jones made public appearances he would greet the audience and they would sing the Star Spangled Banner in his honor. Among the most notable prophecies allegedly predicted by Prophet Jones are the following historic events, the explosion of the atomic bomb over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the end of World War II. He is also credited for predicting the deaths of President Roosevelt, King George VI, Stalin and Hitler. The producers of this documentary do not share the religious beliefs, views or tactics of Prophet Jones. They have no affiliations with his doctrine, church or movement. Most of the main characters from Prophet Jones' early childhood are fictional, and are not to be taken literally. However, the story itself realistically describes actual non-fictional events that transpired in the life of Prophet Jones. Prophet Jones has stated to his congregation many times, that he was the reincarnation of Jesus. The only difference between he and Jesus is that Jesus was born in Bethlehem and he was born in Birmingham. Many believe that at a very young age Prophet Jones had the gift of prophecy. Prophet Jones was almost two years old when he allegedly prophesied to his mother that his daddy, a railroad brakeman, would come home bloody. That evening his daddy came home bleeding at the scalp. A hobo who he ejected from a boxcar hit him in the head with a chunk of coal. At the age of six Prophet Jones was known as a boy prophet. He preached his first sermons in the Triumph of Holy Righteous Church. During the 40s and 50s Prophet Jones reached his peak as a religious leader. He lived in an 18th century French castle at 75 Arden Park and enthusiastic converts gave him expensive gifts. Prophet Jones has often stated that he has never smoked a cigarette or cigar, drank any beer or whiskey, wine or Coca-Cola or engaged in any premarital sexual activities. Prophet Jones said that he received divine messages or orders in the form of a breeze, that fans his right ear from God. He declared that no decisions or appointments were made or kept until God spoke to him. Sometimes he would be two or three hours late for appointments.
Prophet Jones would invite special guests to have dinner with him in his upper room dining chamber located at the top floor of the French castle. The dinner sometimes started at 11 p.m. or 12 midnight. As guests entered the dining chamber they were expected to bow before the Prophet and address him as His Holiness, he then instructed his guests where to be seated. Before eating the scrumptious and delectable meal prepared by his personal cooks Prophet Jones would bless the food and pray over it sometimes 10 to 15 minutes. Two sisters from Chicago who were school teachers said, when Prophet Jones prayed for their ailing mother she was healed of a terminal disease. Out of gratitude for healing their sick mother they purchased and presented him with a $12,900 all-white full-length mink coat. They also flew every week from Chicago to Detroit to sing the Star Spangled Banner on his weekly broadcast. Prophet Jones addressed the older members of his congregation as lords or ladies. The younger members were called Prince and Princess. Members of his congregation referred to him as His Holiness. Female members of his congregation were requested by the Prophet to wear long evening gowns when attending any of his services. Those who came before the Prophet were expected to bow in honor of His Holiness. To not do so was considered a disgrace. In 1955 Prophet Jones hosted Sunday night programs on WXYZ TV making him the first African American to host a weekly television program. Whenever Prophet Jones conducted services they would start at 11 p.m. or 12 midnight and last until 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. Honor of West Philadelphia and Glenwood in Detroit, Michigan, with their highly esteemed spiritual leader and dominion ruler, Reverend Dr. James F. Jones, whose great religious and civic accomplishments have become known throughout the country. We trust you'll find this hour a source of spiritual inspiration to the universal prize that many of God Center now known as the Shrine of Lady Catherine. When Prophet Jones and his entourage entered the sanctuary his devotional leaders would lead the congregation in an up-tempo song. After the Prophet was seated the congregation would dance for 20 to 30 minutes. Sometimes during midnight services Prophet Jones would fall to sleep on his throne, services would abruptly stop for 30 minutes, because his members were afraid to awake him. They would stare and scream, while looking at him as he slept. I say anybody that's born in this world and becomes a prophet, they're the devil's prophet. And I'm saying it a million times. For the prophet of God is created before he enters his mother's womb. God's prophets are created. They are born and not made. And I say all these other kinds that start preaching and prophesying later after they're born. That's a made prophet. And they belong to the death. And God has nothing to do with it. And I said to him, I want you to know 
that you're sitting here looking at the world's only prophet. In a statement renewing his cult battle with Father Divine, Prophet Jones said God had told him to leave Detroit and make his headquarters in New York or Philadelphia or else. He declared that he would go to New York one weekend and take the curse off the city that Father Divine put on it. Rumors were circulating that creditors were threatening to take over his 54-room mansion and his Dominion of God church. But the prophet stated that he would either sell his famed Detroit home, or turn it over to his aides, because he wanted to move in a finer and a more exclusive area, possibly in Bloomfield Hills an all-white Detroit suburban area inhabited by the very very rich and important. Hundreds gathered at Belle Isle to see Prophet Jones walk on water, as he promised he would do. The Prophet preached his Belle Isle sermon, took up a collection from the audience, and asked the audience do they believe that he could walk on water. The audience responded that they believed that he could do so. The Prophet said since you have faith that I can do it, I don't have to prove it, he then dismissed the audience and everyone went home. Nobody gives me an order. And if I don't do things to suit you, it's because God told me something to do. Hallelujah. And in the city of Detroit and in the state of Michigan, in these United States, 50 of them, and in the whole world, there's not a holy preacher. And if God's got a holy one, I'm the only one. Wake that boy up there. I told them... God was waiting for one of those men, for God gave his command to a man and not to a woman. And God hates every woman that lives on earth, because a woman stole God's love from him. And Adam was God's love. That's when God makes a woman bleed once per month, and that blood she loses is her life. It's mighty strange that a man don't do no bleeding. Hallelujah. And I said to them, God wants a man that won't have sex at all with a woman. The men sit there like them couches. The couch didn't get up and the men didn't eat. Here the first 12 men call themselves law in the dominion of God. But they're filthy and dirty. That's why they kept, they kept sitting there. And I kept talking as long as God told me to. I said, you can't have no sex at all with your wife and no woman while you live. Because as long as Adam was not using the thing between his legs to gouge into a woman's body, he was holy. And the moment he used that thing and went to gouge and into a woman, he became a sinner. That's a bully, dude. God wants a man to come back and give him all of his attention. Wonder where we got one. And what was the first sin ever committed? The first sin was a man had sex with a woman. That's the first sin ever committed. There's another bullet to shoot you right through your head. Wake that old hussy up there. Them two old black hussies sitting there. They sleep from morning to night. Both of them look like monkeys. Here's what I want to ask you. Would God, and God took Adam down, didn't he? I said God took Adam down, didn't he? And God took Adam's life out of himself, which was spirit. He put Adam's life in blood. And Adam was a divine being. For he received life from a divine soul. And as long as Adam had divine life, which was a spirit, the body couldn't have no aches or pain. And death had no preeminence over that body. For there was no sin in it. And all bodies that have come on the earth ever since then have came full of death. And they suffer with anguish and then they die. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Would God take one whole man down named Adam and then take one of these preachers on that and put him up on this flock to leave him? 
torment with themselves up there themselves. Yeah. So, brother, I'm not a whole master because I got a wife. You're a lying, dirty whole master with a wife. Ain't that strong, Ted and What man is it? God wants to talk to him during the night season. And his wife is punching him inside with her arm. Or she's painting him. Come on and have me. Come on, I'll give you some. All night. Now how can he get his mind on God and she's begging him to come and get some? Can't get his mind on God. First pop out the bush. She either got a baby or she got a tumor one. God wants a man that won't have a woman at all. Never yeah. every woman in there got a lady in the got up acting ignorant as usual. Because she can act the bigger fool as it can be acted in a show. She said, my husband's been dead a long time. I ain't had a man and I ain't looking for one. I said, but I don't know God may give me a husband. Give her like a chest cat and then sit down. That wasn't nothing to grin about. Stop riding a woman. You love to ride so well, get your horse. Ride the horses back. All the women in there got them raised there and stood. So I'll never have another man while I live. I said, that's the way God wanted. But them three dear lords kept their seats because they wanted to go to school. But I want you to watch and see how many of them three lords is going to get eternal life. None of them three that were sitting in the living room is going to get eternal life. All three of them is going to die. I don't care what they say, how they went. I'm mad they get and get so mad because they're behind and get another hole in it. You're still going to die one, one morning and it ain't going to be long. Because God give them a chance to go around death. And as long as a man has sex with a woman, his body is subject to death. It's subject. I know this is a hot message, but it's that. I'm not, I don't go to sleep and wake up and go and sit down and read the Bible and get a message. God gives me mine. Say, want a man that won't have a sex at all with a woman. His mind must be on God 24 hours every day. Hallelujah. Some sick. Looking all right. I want her. Holiness, can I have her? If you had good sense, you wouldn't want to have her. You'd want to have your life. The breath that's in your body. But to live clean, you can keep it. That's the only way you'll be able to keep your body. Obey God. And do you already? God knows what it takes to keep your body. He's the one made your body, isn't he? He knows everything hanging on and everything that's in it, doesn't he? Because he's the one made it. And if he tells you, don't do a certain thing and you keep doing it, disobedience to God is sin. And your pay for sin is death. Hallelujah. And I want you all to look up in history. Look in your Bible. I want every woman and every man sitting in here, preachers and all. There is a script in the Bible that reads like this. You are as dirty dishwater. That's in the Bible. The next thing is said, you are as filthy dish rags. Then the next thing is said, you are like a bubble on the water. Look at this old thief sitting here with that cheap wig on and we ought to rev them Lord not to bring over here because that's all she does, come and sleep. But I want you to look up filthy dish water, dirty dish water, and filthy dish rag. Look it up. And it means a woman. That's what history gives outstandingly that a woman is. She's dirty dish water. Oh, she's a filthy dish rag. Have you known every woman that has sex have to have a cloth? Every woman that has sex with a man, she got a rag laying on the side of the bed. White. Oh, there you go.
Do you know I don't want to hear a man in this dominion and out either who's having sex with a woman. I don't want to hear him say nothing in here because he ain't clean. Now this is boiling it down. Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, this is boiling it down. And I don't want to hear a woman get up to give an expression. And I don't want to be a twitter a big bottle behind all over the floor dancing. Because ain't nothing the matter with her. She, she just ready to lay on her back to have a man and throw her <laughs> She ain't got no devil's holy ghost. She got a heart, but it ain't holy. <laughs> When you are holy, you reckon, ever, you reckon God ever had sex with anybody? Well, he told you to be just like him. And you can't say it said get that way. It don't say get. It said be that way. Be holy. Be, 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 be holy. Don't get holy. Be holy. In all manner of conversation. And a voice is just talking to me, telling me, Somebody don't like what you say, well, they can go to hell or go, or, or, or go and poke yourself back up in your head. It don't make me no difference. Proverbs 16, 18 says that pride goes before destruction, and the Holy Spirit before a fall. 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time He may exalt you. No person should claim the powers of God and make themselves equal with Him. God has called us to be good shepherds and stewards over the spiritual gifts that He has entrusted us with. Therefore, we should use our spiritual gifts wisely. At the end God will hold all of us accountable for how we use these gifts in administering to the body of Christ. Ministers who exalt themselves are traveling down a path of self-destruction. Let us not forget how Lucifer pride led to his fall from heaven. He wanted to sit on the throne of God and have the angels worship him. A minister is a servant, whose job is to direct praise and worship towards God but not to self. There is no respect of persons with God. God is love. He loves everybody. God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. The only thing that God hates is sin. When it's his time to call and our time to answer will you be ready? How do you want the world to remember you? As Christians we should want to leave a legacy of humility, love and righteous living. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus.